stars that fill the summer night look down from above the beauty of the day and night you fashioned with love your hands prepared the land and sea and everything that came to be brought joy to your heart there is joy in your creation in the message of salvation and the paradise to come but to have your love forever is a real and lasting treasure you alone Jehovah, we have all we need to bring us delight. The things we hear and touch and see and feel deep inside, you gave us a choice. There is joy in your creation, in the message of salvation and the past. But to have your love forever would be ours for all time. There is joy in your creation, in the message of salvation and the paradise to come. But to have your love forever is a real and lasting treasure. You will go.
Jehovah by my side, I will not run and hide. My God is with me, this I know. With eyes of faith, I see beyond the darkness. With eyes of faith, there's nothing more to fear. With Jehovah, I am strong, determined to go on, knowing that my God is always near. With eyes of faith,
life is new There's the sound of happy voices And the scent of new mown hay Now you're calling to your loved ones As you start another perfect day Then we thank our God Jehovah For his tender loving care Yes, the blessings we all share were just around the corner And every day I smile and say How good to see your happy face Cause once it seemed I only dreamed That you'd be in my warm embrace Waiting round the corner Is a world I and fear surround me the way ahead not clear through uncertainty you guide me I know you're always near life may not be easy for you my life is safe with you
stars that fill the summer night look down from above the beauty of the day and night you fashioned with love your hands prepared the land and sea and everything that came to be brought joy to your heart there is joy in your creation in the message of salvation and the paradise to come but to have your love forever is a real and lasting treasure you alone will prove to be Jehovah, we have all we need to bring us delight. The things we hear and touch and see and feel deep inside. You gave us such a perfect start, eternity in every heart and joy in our lives. There is joy in creation in the message of salvation and the paradise to come but to have your love forever is a real and lasting treasure you alone will This is the way I'll go. 
God meant it to be. Those who fell asleep along the way, they live again. We see them every day. Come with me, and you'll see. We'll see. History, come with me, and you'll see. You will see. Look around. There's joy and laughter in every sound. Look and see. This is the way. To be Jehovah's word is enough for me. With eyes of faith, it's reality. As we see what's in store, you can be sure until the moon is no more. Close your eyes and come with me to God's world of peace. And yes.
a time that we went to the hospital. And um, this is where I know that I had become very close to them, that I did refer to them as my parents because they were like my parents here. So I remember one day I took mom to go visit dad and as we're walking in the hospital, the doctor was with them and dad said, my daughter, you're here. And I said, yes, I brought mom with me. And so we both walked over and gave him a kiss and the doctor looked at us with this little bit of a confused look on his face. And so dad went on and says, uh, this is my daughter, Deborah, and my wife, Gwendolyn. And he still looked a little confused because I was a little lily white and dad was a, and mom were a little shades darker than me. So I just looked over and I said, I'm the white sheep in the family. And we laughed and we had a good laugh with it. But one thing that the doctor caught was we were a family. We were bonded at the heart. And we were there to support them when my siblings of the Bennett family, my sisters couldn't be there. We were the, go I was a go-between sis. And I'm so grateful that they shared them with me and I could be that kind of sister to them. How do you describe the love she had for her grandchildren and great-grandchildren was beautiful. And I had that chance to see it when I would watch her bond with them and spend time with them because she loves spoiling them. And I'm very thankful for that. And I often will remember one thing every day. Every time I spoke to her, she would always end it. Yes, dear, I love you too. So I thank Jehovah for giving me this lovely family, the Bennett family, and I thank you for sharing your mom and dad with me. And I truly look forward to the day that we all can hug her in paradise and it will be a day of happy tears. Hello everyone, I'm Judith. Sister Bennett and I met in 2007. I can say for the few years we were together, we had a good time. It was a pleasure to be out with and serve this week for her. She never missed a meeting. At that period, we used to have three meetings a week. We drive together, we have fun, and she was also very soft-spoken and a great cook. I don't think I ever ate anything better than her oxtail. Her oxtail was delicious, and I always want to eat it when she made it. Um, we know we are going to miss her. Looking forward to see her soon in paradise at the resurrection. I hope all the family will keep a good memory of her to help them to cope with this loss. Have a good evening. Take a moment now and picture the scene Up ahead on the path are what seem to be Children laughing at play in a world free of the fears we once faced And taking care of this beautiful earth Are a people that live by our Father's words Until the moon is no more There is the peace we have been waiting for We will feel His love Sun in the new world to come. Hope is a fire in our hearts. Hope is an anchor that holds us firm. Hope is a light that shines like the sun as we see ourselves there.
Take a moment now and think of our place By the mountains and rivers or wide open plains It's a place to call home I'm now walking in through your front door There is someone that you know Holding out his open arms in hopes of a tearful embrace Feels like forever since you've been face to face Even that And we know that there are those two, while they are not in person here, they are with us on some. They are on Zoom, Skype, and YouTube. Everyone, we welcome you all. We want to start our program this morning. It's really a solemn occasion, and to do that, if you turn into your program, you will notice that the song is there, so you can follow along. You can sing along with the music. So, we want to start off by singing song 139, the star. See yourself when all is new. You can stand and sing along with the music. And that's the first song on your program. I'm asking, let me crave your indulgence a little. I'm just asking you to bear with us. We're having a little difficulty, but I think we'll soon overcome all the glitches that we're having. So just, just give us a few minutes. We'll soon be having our song, don't worry. We'll soon be getting this song. Just sorting out.
Yes, your attention, please. We're really experiencing some difficulties. There's an outage where the speaker is really poor outage. I think the power has come, uh, it has returned, but now just waiting you know, for the internet system to come up. So I'm just asking you, be patient. Could you just give us, let's say, five more minutes till about 1.15? We'll see if we can get things sorted out. So that is what is happening, really.
Every word from his mouth. Every word from his mouth. We'll do all for which he sent it out. Jehovah's will for this earth. Jehovah's will for this earth. Fulfilling every living thing's last wish. I fear the lion. Why should I fear any foe? With Jehovah by my side, I will not run and hide. My God is with me, this I know. With eyes of faith, I see beyond the darkness with eyes of faith there's nothing more to fear with jehovah i am strong determined to go on knowing that my god is always near with eyes of
All right, let's get settled down, and I hope we can make it through. You know, despite the benefit from modern technology, it has its disadvantages, and here is a time where we are experiencing that. However, we are going to be proceeding. As mentioned, we want to be singing song or opening song, song 139, which is entitled, See Yourself When All Is New. Yes, I know. We're asking you, please, please calm down. Everything will be fine. Don't worry. Song 139. What we're going to be asking, please, the, the, the technical operators, they're saying, you know, we want to avoid crisscrossing in the, in the aisle because the camera, it's really...
Well done. Beautiful. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father Jehovah, with humble hearts, we beg to approach your divine presence. We want to thank you for the gift of life. We're assembled here. It's a solemn occasion. We have lost a sister, a mother, an aunt, a grandmom. And it's not an easy time that we're experiencing. And especially to the immediate family of the bereaved. But we're asking Jehovah, you have been mentioned in the Bible as a God of comfort. And we can draw comfort from you as it's revealed to us through the scriptures. We know this is not your intent. It wasn't your purpose for, for mankind just to live a few years and to die like that. No, you wanted man to live forever in peace and happiness. But because sin by Satan the devil entered in the picture, all of us, we have inherited it. And we eventually, because of sin, we grow old, we get sick, and we eventually die. But out of your great love for mankind, you have not just left it there, Jehovah. You have provided your son an act, a superlative, superlative act of love towards humans. And so you have provided your son, and he has given his life as a ransom sacrifice that anyone desirous can exercise faith in that ransom sacrifice and experience your eternal blessings. We know you have established a kingdom, and very soon it will eradicate all the miseries from this earth, including death itself, and paradise will be ushered in. We look forward eagerly to that time, Jehovah. And this really gives us hope. And we look to you, Jehovah, even more intently with eyes of faith as a God of love. So we are glad for all these provisions that you have made for us in a spiritual way. So may we pay rapt attention to what will be said and as the scriptures will be used extensively we can draw comfort from your scriptures and especially now jehovah we want to take the members of the bereaved the immediate members of the bereaved family jehovah may you prove to be a god of comfort to them and may we too do our part remembering them giving words of comfort reassuring them and also helping them to see that very soon all these bad conditions will be out of the way so we thank you for all your blessings, and as we're going to go into our meeting now, may your blessings be upon today's proceedings, Jehovah. So we leave everything entirely in your loving care while we make our expressions to your son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. Again, let me really extend our appreciation to all of you who have waited so patiently and now we want to get things started so to move right into our program what we're going to be doing we want to be remembering sister bennett just who she is and so what we're going to be doing we're going to be having an interview and so we are going to be inviting brother and sister Leng. and they'll take us back in time and you'll hear just the kind of person sister Leng is so we invite them all right. So, Berling, I'm going to ask you this question. Tell us a little bit about Sister Bennett. First of all, I'd like everybody to know that Sister, that Sister Bennett was blessed. And I use it that way because the Bible says you'll get 70 or 80. And if by added strength, you'll get a little bit more. Sister Bennett got 70, she got 80. And she got 94 years of age. She not only got 94 years of age, Sister Bennett got four generations. How much persons get a chance to do that? The four generation, we could look at the children first. Dobby, Joyce, June, May, Synth, Pansy, Bernard, and Anne-Marie. Those are seven out of the ten children that she had. But now, that's one generation. Generation number two, she has 40 grandchildren. Generation number three, she has 74 great-grandchildren. And generation num number four, we have 13 great-great-grandchildren. And I'm sure if Sister Bain was still alive, she'd get more. <laughs> yes. She, she survived. She survived also by a brother, um, Fitzroy, and a sister, or two sisters, Idel and, and, and Lillian. These are some of them that survived. You know, Miss Bennett, and I'm calling her Miss Bennett now for a reason. Miss Bennett, Miss Gwen is what the community know, know her as. Very loving, very hospitable uh, a person she was. 
And I can tell you that um, Ms. Bennett would uh, ensure that the community is properly fed. She was a very generous person. In fact, the children referred to her as a modern day Dorcas. And my wife can testify to that. All right, so Sister Len, let's hear from you now as you expand on that aspect. Well, yes, we had the joy of studying the Bible with Sister Bennett. And we would go there on a Sunday afternoon. And I tell you, there was no Sunday that we would go and we would leave empty-handed. She always had something to give us. In fact, actually every Sunday, I didn't have to cook. She would prepare a Sunday meal for me. Full course, rice and peas, pork <laughs> or chicken and vegetable and sometimes the juice to go with it. Yes. She would do that, and in addition to that, a nice um, potato pudding, or a, or a cornmeal pudding. Yes, she, would, she loved to bake as well. And so she always gave us a meal to take home. She, she, she didn't just give us for a day. That meal would serve us for days. That's how hospitable she was. And um, when our daughters visited, she always had something packaged to give us. Or when she went away and come back, she always had something to share. So she was a wonderful person. And I know she loved me very much. She took care of me. When I was pregnant with my daughter, oh my, she really did take care of us to the max. So we're getting a little bird's eye view of who oh, Sister Bate really is. Yes. Thank you, Sister Lane. But we're going to be moving on. Now, back to you, no Golding. At what point did Mistress Bennett become, uh, become Sister Bennett? Right, and I'm happy that you ask question that way. Yes. Well, Mrs. Bennett becomes uh, Sister Bennett after she left Jamaica for the United States. One of her many travels. And Jehovah drew her to him while she was up there. And she started to study the Bible. When she came back to Jamaica, we were privileged to continue the Bible study with her. And by the way, I can tell you, I can't forget the day when I sat into that living room with a Bible open up with her. And she said to me, Brother Leng, I have wasted 50 years. And she repeated it. I have wasted 50 years. I'm feeling it right now. Do you know why she said that? <laughs> yes, I knew why she said she waited 50 years. Interestingly, she, she was much like, much like the Apostle Paul. I can tell you that. You know, the Apostle Paul was Saul before. And he used to persecute God's people. But then he, when he drove and draw him to, 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 to him, he became the Apostle Paul. And in Sister Bent's um, um, situation, she opposed the truth. In fact, it was told that when Brother Bennett had a talk to be given on the platform at Time and Patience at the Kingdom Hall, she hid his shoes. <laughs> but Brother Bennett left with a bare foot and he went to the Kingdom Hall and went on stage with bare foot and gave his talk. That must have meant something to her. And we also understood that she used to wear to be clothes. You wet up the clothes and can't get to go to meeting. So she was putting up a fight against the truth. In fact, Brother Bennett if he came from the field and was sweaty and dirty, he just picked up his book bag and his dirty clothes and he walked the time and patience in the kingdom hall and he stayed outside and benefited from the meeting and back home. That was the man he was. And that must have meant a lot to Sister Bennett. As a result of that, yes, as a result of that, Sister Bennett has, done, has been drawn close to Jehovah. That's very interesting. So... What happened as she went on? Well, Sister Bennett now have studied the Bible, the Jehovah's Witnesses, recognized the amount of time she had wasted, she said. She dedicated her life to serve Jehovah and symbolized that dedication by water baptism in the year 2001, make her 21 years as a servant of Jehovah and certainly we really appreciate her. The congregation loved her. She loved them. 
And as a result of them, we are here very saddened by what has happened, but we know our hope is high that Jehovah will remember her. Thank you very much, Berlin, for you know, bringing back to our memories the kind of person Sister Bennett was. And, and just to add to that, I, I have never seen a person so humble. All of you who know Sister Bennett, she's the kind of person when she speaks, you, you really have to listen. She speaks so softly, as you see even the, the, the interviews on her monitor. So we get a fuller understanding of who she really was. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. We thank you again, God and Sister Lane. So, but as we're getting the pieces together now, our jigsaw puzzle. So, we are at the junction now where we are going to be introducing our speaker for the funeral discourse. So, we want to be inviting Brother Howard Clark from the Bonnie Congregation as he addresses us with the funeral discourse. Brother Clark, please. Again, friends, we don't know what's happening. Please, just give us a few minutes again. Apparently, the, the internet, it, it's in and out. Shame it be we mourn, for there is nothing wrong in mourning. Faithful servants of Jehovah in the past mourn the loss of their beloved ones. The Bible tells us that Abraham mourned and wept over his wife Sarah when she died. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, the account tells us that Joseph fell upon his father, wept over him, and kissed him when he died. And the perfect Son of God, Jesus Christ, was moved to tears when he visited the home of his friend Lazarus, who had died. Mourning is part of the grieving and healing process. It is said, however, that time will lessen the pain, the grief, and the sorrow. Time may even cause some to forget. With the passing of time, many persons may find it difficult to remember Gwendolyn Bennett. How oh, comforting it is to know, however, that there is one who will not forget. The Bible identifies that one in the Bible book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 10. There we read of him, the Bible tells us, at Hebrews chapter 6, and verse 10. It says, for God is not unrighteous, so as to forget your work. And the love you show for his name by ministering and continuing to minister to the Holy Ones. Yes, Jehovah will not forget. And so we are confident that the name Gwendolyn Bennett is indelibly etched in the memory of our God Jehovah. And so even as we mourn, we are comforted. We are comforted by the one whom the Bible at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 calls the Father of tender mercies and the God of all comfort. We are comforted in reading scriptures like Psalm 147 and verse 3, where it says that Jehovah heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. At times like these, we need comfort, and Jehovah provides the comfort that we need. One way that Jehovah provides comfort is by answering from the Bible questions that often come to mind when we lose a loved one in death. Questions like, why do we die? <clears throat> what happens to us when we die? 
What hope is there, if any, for our dead loved ones? The answer to these questions help to form the basis for the faith of Sister Gwenny. A faith that she had in a God of wisdom, love, justice, and power. So the question is, why do we die? First, we need to bear in mind that death was not a part of God's original purpose for mankind. It was the disobedience of our first parents, Adam and Eve. Their rebellion against their creator in the Garden of Eden that set in motion by inheritance, sin, with old age, sickness, and death as a consequence for their own. The inspired word of the Apostle Paul at Romans chapter 5 and verse 2 tells us that is why just through one man sin entered into the world and death through sin. And so death spread to all men because we have all sinned. So under the condemnation of sin and death, from a human standpoint, there was no hope for mankind. For what man needed was a ransom. A perfect life to buy back what Adam lost. And there is no such one to be found among imperfect mankind. It is as the inspired psalmist says at Psalm 49 and verse 8. The ransom price for their life is so precious that it is always beyond their reach. This is where really the greatest expression of love on the part of our God to over us manifested. Jehovah provided a hope. Right after man's sin, God gave a prophecy recorded in the Bible at Genesis 3, 15 and 16, which promised the unbeing of the effects of man's rebellion and the destruction of Satan the devil who instituted the first rebellion there in Eden. This was a guarantee that his original purpose for the earth will be fulfilled. The Bible also tells us, gives us this further assurance in the Bible book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, 55, this is what, this is the assurance that we are giving in. At Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. But just as the rain and the snow pour down from heaven, <clears throat> and do not return there until they saturate the air, making it to juice and sprout, giving the seed to the sow and bread to the oak eater. So my word that goes out of my mouth will be, it will not return to me without results, but it will certainly accomplish whatever it is, my delight. And I will have sure success in what I have said it to do. Yes. Jehovah's purpose for the earth, despite the rebellion in Eden, would be fulfilled. Not only was that guarantee given that Jehovah's purpose for the earth would be fulfilled, but Jehovah gave an inspired description of what conditions on the earth will be like when his purpose is fulfilled. In the Bible book of Revelation, 10 chapter 21, verses 3 and 4 we read. That I heard lo a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, the tent of God is with mankind, and he will reside with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. And he will wipe out every tear eyes, and death there was the purpose for the earth to have it filled with righteous, perfect people living in paradise. It's something that will be accomplished. With such a hope for the future, however, what happens to those who die? How will they be benefited? Interestingly, the Bible describes those who have died as sleeping, sleeping. Psalm 13 and verse 3, David says, Give light to my eyes so that I may not fall asleep in death. Then Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, reporting on his death, the Bible says, David fell asleep in death. At John 11, verse 11 through 13. Your attention, please. If you notice, I mean, we are just experiencing a lot of problems. You hardly can hear what the speaker is saying. We cannot even view more our monitors here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a 360. We're going to turn around now, and we're going to be inviting Bola Leng as he discusses that. So please be with us. So Bola Leng is on hand. He'll address us. Recognize the technical difficulty we're having with our system.
And this occasion is a very, very sad one. An occasion that we'd love to ensure that all the family members and also the close friends and relatives of Sister Bennett is comforted. That's the reason why we're here. In fact, Sister Bennett is not hearing us at all. The Bible says in Psalm 146 that her spirit went out. She'll go back to the earth and in that very day her thoughts will perish. So she's not knowing what is happening right now. So the real purpose of our presentation here is going to be to ensure that when you leave here today, you're comforted by the pages of the scriptures. It is a fact that when Jehovah God created the first man, he never ever had in his intention that mankind would get sick, grow whole, and die. In fact, if Adam had done what he ought to do, then the truth is that we would never be here like this. Not at all. There's no need to be here like this because Adam would have done what he should have done and Jehovah would bless him expanding the boundaries of the Garden of Eden into a complete worldwide paradise and have children, the Bible says, not to overfill the earth, but to fill the earth. So Jehovah is going to ensure that man reproduce perfect children. And what a time that would have been when all of us sitting down here right now would have been perfect, including Sister Bennett. But he didn't work that way. It certainly went another way. Adam chose independence. He wanted somebody else to be his sovereign Lord. Satan the devil, that one was. And because he selected the incorrect person, then we are now suffering the consequences of what Adam had left for us. The Christian Apostle Paul, when writing to Roman Christians, made this quite clear. And we can see the justice in this. At Romans chapter 5 and verse number 12, if you have your Bible there or a device, we could look at that together. The uh, Christian Apostle Paul says, just as through one man sin entered into the world, so, and, death, um, and death through sin... And so death spread to all men because we all have sinned. Every one of us here sitting down today, we are sinners. And we are sinners because we inherit the sin from Adam. We inherit what Adam had done in the Garden of Eden. So we weren't there. We didn't pick any fruit. We didn't dis disobey Jehovah. But because we are his blood relatives, we are children of Adam, then we now succumb to the disease now of death, old age, sickness, and death. You know, dying a family member is not new. We could well recall what happened in Abraham's case. He lost his wife. We could well recall what happened in Job's case. He lost 10 children. Uh, just imagine 10 caskets here. He lost 10 children. How did he feel when that happens? Not only that, the first man who died, which was Abel, how did Eve handle that? Because she had to deal with that death too, even though they caused the problem. We could also think about the man uh, Jacob. The Bible says that Jacob thought he lost his son. He got a garment with blood all over it. And as a result of that, he thought he lost his son. And the Bible says he started to mourn. He started to cry for days and days and all his children, which would now have been 11 of them plus daughters, could not comfort him. If you feel like you want to cry, family members, cry. Don't hold it back. You know, sometimes we tend to tell them, okay, don't cry, don't cry. Let them, let it go. The Bible also appreciated John chapter 11 that even Jesus cried. Yes. If we turn your Bibles to John chapter 11 and look at this Bible verse and see Jesus in a situation where he himself cried. John the 11th chapter. And we're going to look now to see what happened in Jesus' case. Go to the verse number 33. 
And remember they were calling Jesus all this time. And they were saying to him, Master, Lazarus is sick. He's about to die. Jesus didn't go immediately. Lazarus died. So when you reach at Bethany, which is some two miles away from where he was in Jerusalem, the Bible says, when Mary, that's verse 30, who arrived where Jesus was and caught sight of him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Can you feel the distress in the voice of Mary? Can you hear the cry for help, for somebody to try and comfort her? Yes, just seeing the master. She says, I'm not blaming you, but just in case you were here, our brother would not have died. But verse 33 continues when it says, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he groaned within himself, and he became troubled. The brothers, the Jews, left Jerusalem, some two miles away, and they came up to, Jer to, to Bethany to comfort Mary and Martha. But they too were crying. And doesn't that happen right here? When you really come to comfort the immediate family members of Sister Bennett, and when you see them cry, do you not feel like you want to cry? I saw her big daughter crying a while ago. I've never cried for a very long time, and I felt I would cry. That's how you're going to feel. Because we're sharing the moments with them. We're letting them understand that the loss is mutual. Sister Bennett was a community person. Not only, only in the preaching work, but she was so generous as we heard in the interview. And the support that she has here and on the, uh, on the Zoom platform, that support now tells us the kind of person she was. Jesus groaned when he saw what was happening there. But notice verse number 34. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus, the master, the most of all the earth, his son, who was about to resurrect Lazarus, the verse says, he broke down in tears. Can you imagine seeing Jesus crying? Why is he crying? Is he crying because Lazarus is dead? Why do we cry? We cry because we lose our loved one and we have no control over whether or not that person will come back to life. So we cry. If you knew that you could just uh, clip your finger and she's back to life, would you cry? There'd be no need to cry. So why did Jesus cry? He knew he was about to resurrect him. Jesus cried when he recognized what Adamic sin has done to people. Yes. We mourn because of this Adamic sin. And as a result of us mourning, sometimes our whole, whole life is disturbed because we are now in a distressed situation, losing our loved one in death and has no control over it. So when Jesus broke down in tears, he knew he's going to resurrect Lazarus. And he's going to give a witness with that resurrection. But Jesus, he understands the situation that happens. Jesus went to the tomb where the man was buried. And the girls said to him, Master, don't open the tomb. Why? Because by now he should be smelling. Oh, but what is Jesus going to resurrect? Is it the body that is decaying? Not at all. The Bible says Jehovah is going to give, give the personality a resurrection and then he will give it a body as he sees fit. Just imagine when Jesus walked up to the, the grave. The Bible says, I knew that you always hear me when he's praying to his father. But I spoke an account of the crowd standing around so that they may believe that you sent me. So he's also giving a witness to the crowd that stood up around there in verse number 42. He's giving a witness. 
He's going to let individuals who stand there and observe what was happening understands that in the near future, Jesus is going to resurrect millions of people who will come back to life on the earth. And our hope is very high for the resurrection of Sister Bennett. Yes, we're looking forward to see her again. Interestingly, Jesus said to her, in, said in verse number uh, 43, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. If you were Mary or Martha, if you were any of those Jews that came up to comfort Mary and Martha, if you were on the scene and you were crying, and the master says, Lazarus, come on out, and you saw your brother coming out, how would you feel? Would you cry? You would cry. But this time, it is going to be tears of joy. It is going to be tears of joy. And Jesus was demonstrating that in the near future, we are going to, we are going to welcome back dead ones who die in God's memory. And when these come back, we're going to cry again. But we're going to cry tears of joy. Can you imagine your mother, Sister Bennett, your friend, Sister Bennett? Think about the brothers in the, in the Wallins congregation right now, over 100 publishers who have missed her right now. And they get the chance to welcome her back. What a time that is going to be. And that's what Jesus was doing. Yes. He was giving a witness of what is going to come in the near future. And we're all here trying to anticipate this. It is interesting to know that the comforting news is not just that a resurrection is possible for Sister Bennett. And her hope is pretty high. But the comforting news is, even though Sister Bennett is dead, there's no need to be afraid of Sister Bennett. There's no need to be afraid of Sister Bennett, right? There's some person might say, I'm not looking at her at all. I'm afraid to look at her, no. I know we, sometimes we don't look because uh, the reason why we don't look is because we'd like to remember Sister Bennett with that nice, pretty smile. She's always smiling. She's just calm and cool and pleasant. And we love to be around her. Sometimes, as Brother Marco mentioned the point a while ago, you have to put your ears down to her mouth to hear what she's saying. She's that kind of person. We want to have her back. What a time that is going to be. But while that is so, we, want, we won't have her back before time. So there's no need for you to see nobody out there that look like she and start to run. It's not she. It is not her. Because the Bible says she is unconscious, and this is total unconsciousness now. She is unconscious. She knows nothing. And anything that we who are alive now can do now, we better do it because if we wait until we die, we can't do it anymore. We can't love Jehovah when we are dead, can we? Sister Bennett can't continue to love Jehovah. So she had to do all that she could have done to please Jehovah, to, so that when she died, she would have died in God's memory. Because all the individuals who will come back to life are only individuals who have died in God's memory. Not all the persons will come back. Jesus made it quite clear. He says, God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that all those who exercise faith in him. So it is not everybody is going to benefit from the ransom sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. No. Not everybody will be resurrected to life because they die. No, the Bible says only those who exercise faith in the ransom sacrifice and die in God's memory, Jehovah is going to give your body as he sees fit. We all want to live, don't we? But our death when we die in God's memory is like a moment's sleep. And that's why Jesus said to his disciples, he says, I'm going to wake up the man Lazarus. I'm going to wake him up. 
And one of the disciples said to him, maybe it's the man Peter, you know. He said to him, if he's asleep, why are you going down there now? You could wake him up tomorrow. Jesus said to him, what I mean is that Lazarus is dead. Now, we don't need to be afraid of Sister Bennett. She can't love you. She can't hate you. She can't go. She can't frighten you. There's no need to change up the furniture in our room. There's no need to put the Bible at Psalm 23. There's no need to wear your garments a certain way. There's no need to wear a certain color. There's no need to do anything like that. Sister Bennett can't do you anything. And that's comforting news, wouldn't you agree? So yes, we are in a situation, a predicament that has been carved out for us through or for parents, Adam and Eve. The Bible helps us to appreciate, though, that Jehovah understands every one of you and how you're feeling right now. Yes, if you turn your Bibles to Psalm 34, you will understand, and this is very comforting also, to understand how Jehovah feels about us and the situation we're facing right now. Psalm 34. Very interesting text it is. Psalm, the 34th chapter. And let's cast our eyes down to verse number 17. The Bible says, They cry out. We are crying out right now, aren't we? They cry out, and Jehovah heard. So Jehovah is hearing your heart palpitating because you're saying, We have lost a loved one in death. He's hearing your heart. And the Bible says, Jehovah is hearing you. But notice, he rescued them from all their distress. And we are now faced with a very, very distressing situation right now. Only if someone here could have resurrected her, we'd be happy, don't it? And we're wondering what is happening. Technology has reached so high that we're wondering why the engineers and the professors and the experts can't do nothing to stop death. They won't be able to do it because there's an issue on the table. And Jehovah is a part of that issue. But he's allowing Satan the devil to do all that he wants to do until the day comes when he's going to take him out of operation. The Bible says he's going to put him in the abyss. And he's going to stay there for 1,000 years. And at the end of that, he's going to release him one more time. But at the end of that release, the Bible says he will completely burn him with fire. Not the fire you know. This is in Revelation. That fire signifies complete destruction. He will be totally obliterated. The prophets with him and all those who serve him on earth today will certainly go with him. But verse 18 held further to comfort us. It says, Jehovah is close to the brokenhearted. We're all brokenhearted now. Jehovah is close to you. And he says, he saves those who are crushed in spirit. We are mourning right now. We are grieving right now because of a sad situation. And mourning and grieving doesn't happen and stop overnight. Some of us will grieve longer. But the fact is, when we hear that the Bible says that Jehovah is close to us, it makes us feel a little different. And we'd like to continue to believe that. We had problems with our system. We had problems with our internet. The brother who had the part to do the talk, he had internet issues at the, at the moment. So it was also additional stress on you. And this chairman apologized for that. I'd like, to, I'd like to say it again. We apologize to all of you for what happens. But despite the stress that it caused you, Despite the stress or distress of knowing that we have lost a mother, a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a friend in the community. Despite all of this, 
Was it good to be here? Yeah. It was so good to be here. And we're here because we come to benefit from the scriptures comforting us, helping us to understand one that our sister cannot hurt you. She's not hearing you. It would have been nice if she could just look at you and see you how you dress nice. Look at you and hear the nice things you're saying about her. But she can't do it. Sad to say. And we also benefited too from the fact that even though she is in total unconsciousness, she has now succumbed to what the Bible describes as our greatest enemy, which is death. We come to appreciate the fact from the scriptures that yes, she can come back to life. And it is our hope that our sister Gwendolyn Bennett will come back to life to live in paradise on earth when God's kingdom will take over the entire operations of the earth. Mankind will never get sick. Mankind will never grow old. Mankind will never die. What a time that is going to be. The corruption will be gone. All those who are associated with activities and behaviors of Satan the devil, they are gone too. Yes, the Bible says, the meek ones only will possess the earth. And they will find exquisite delight in the abundance of peace. What a funeral to be today. It is a sad occasion. But we benefited so much. So much comforting words. But in conclusion, I'd like to say this to you. I'd like for you to remember that today is one day. But there's something that we need to do. And I'm going to share that with you just right now. Please turn your Bibles to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians the 5th chapter. And we're going to look at verse number 11. And to see what we need to do from today. Verse 11 says, Therefore, keep encouraging one another and building one another up just as you are in fact doing right now. Your presence here is very encouraging to the family members, immediate family members. Those seven children, those 74 great-grandchildren, those 40 grandchildren, your presence here means a lot to them. But you know, after today, sometimes we forget the telephone calls, we forget the text messages. And we still need you to continue to do that because I need your help. And that's what the Bible says. It says, keep on encouraging one another just as you are in fact doing right now. We're looking forward to have Sister Bennett back in the resurrection. But every single one of, of us here will need to do something in order to get that privilege of seeing Sister Bennett again. The Bible says, this good news that the kingdom must be preached in all the damage and earth for weakness until the end comes. And the good news is about God's kingdom. All of us here will need to come to know Jehovah God, come to know Jesus Christ and the purpose of his kingdom. So we, if we should die, will die in God's memory. Once we die in God's memory, we are safe. And he's going to bring us back in a resurrection in a new world of righteousness where peace and unity is to dwell where every single neighbor that you have is going to be your best neighbor. May we all do all that we can do to study God's word, the Bible, and apply the information therein so that you will get the privilege of seeing our dear sister Gwendolyn Bennett again. I want to say thank you very much, Brother Leng, for such animated delivery. And again, we want to thank the audience for your patience as we went through our service. We're going to be singing a song at this point, though. We're going to be closing this segment. We're going to be singing song 151, He Will Call. And that's based on what the speaker just mentioned from the promises in the Bible. He will call. 
the dead will rise again. So let's sing along when music is played. We won't be have any musical accompaniment, so we are going to just be blending our voices as we sing along.
Yes, but I guess And the family like to let you know before you go that the repass will be done at Fennels, that's in Rosal. As you going up that way, you take the left at the stoplight. That is the next left. So for those who want to view the body, come this way, exit that way, then after we proceed to the graveside.
want to put her on her hand. All the price is because got this bit of my five shoes. I put her on the five of them left me. When I know she said, I'm out of them open. I said, I'm going to leave this because I don't want to look. If you look here, as a thought, look, you see? Yes, yes, that's something. All right, all right, all right. Oh my God. You got to let your... No, you don't see. Yeah, it's not your... Oh, that's what I want to ask. Come on. I'm not going to do it. 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 I'm not going to do Oh, Go back out and there, we are. I'm going to run. 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 Okay. Hi guys, hi guys. Hello. So we'll be heading to the cemetery right now. So let's give us a couple of minutes. So we're still on but we're going to be driving. So it's going to be a little fuzzy and cut. Okay? Until we get to the cemetery. Alright? So let's bear with us. We're on our way. Yeah, yeah. It's working. Okay. No, 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 no,
Show the young lady. No, I come here saying. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm going Yeah, I know we're going. Okay, okay. After your program? I'm not sure, man. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead and do the. No problem. dish that you're preparing it could be the voice of one of your daughters sound so much like mama and all of that will cause such strong emotions to visit you one of the good things though that you would have heard and you're familiar with is that let's put a light side to all of what's happening here have you ever been watching a movie, a very exciting movie, and something comes up, something that you have to move, and you take a remote and you do what? You press the pause button. So that's what is now happening right here. The pause button is being pressed. Yes? Her existence is now paused. So see it that way. Or it could be at the end of a beautiful movie that you so enjoyed and then you see this line come across the screen to be continued that puts a smile on your face why because you're anticipating the next chapter the next series so let us allow those things to influence how we feel and as we think about sister Gwen let us say to be continued let us just see it as a pause button in her experience. For her, that book that she has written for 90 odd years, it's not the final chapter. It's not. No, it's not the final chapter. Why can we have such confidence? Simply because, as I listened to the presentation, an expression was used that mentions that 
persons who are in God's memory. God's memory has a future. And that's very comforting. So the best place to be right now, she's there. She's in who's? In God's memory. So we encourage everyone, and especially our dear family members, our daughters, sons, grandkids, it's difficult. But as difficult as it is, please allow the positives of our lives. In that, she even plays a part in your existence. Whether it be it she's your mother, your grandmother, or your great-grandmother, she plays a role. Yes, she plays a critical role as a mother or a grandmother. So allow how she had affected your life to live on the positives and allow those to impact you as you go forward. Life will always have bumps in the road. Yes, and for this side of the world that we live in, unfortunately, yes, unfortunately, as smooth as the ride is, at times we stumble upon huge challenges, as is the case of the loss of Sister Bennett. But let us, though, reflect on the time when we'll not have Commodores, we'll not have funerals, we'll all live till less on us. You know, we use that expression. The Bible says man will live forever. And there's something about Sister Bennett that she has over all of us. She lived over 90 odd years. The Bible mentioned 70. She got the extra 24. And she did very good with it. Especially, she has an indelible mark written on your hearts, the hearts of her kids, her grandkids, and her great grandkids. So as we spend the rest of the time here, let us reflect not on the sadness that associates with lowering her casket, hovering over her grave. Let us allow to revive in our hearts the good memories of her, her love, her kindness, and how she has impacted your life. And guess what? Part of her lives on in the sense that the effort she invested in you as an individual, you can continue to be that person. At this time, we'll ask that casket be lowered. Afterwards, we'll join in singing a song that is listed here on the program. If I bring our inside, no, 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 put back on. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Put back in the closet. Yeah. Do this again. Yeah. to seal the grave area. 
we could come to it uh, atmosphere with some songs that are here. And this one was used already. But we can utilize it again. We can look on the programs that you have. And here's a song 150. Based on the word of Job, and many of us are familiar with Job. When you go through hardship, you always think about his example, how he endured suffering, and how he came out with super blessings. Now, at his lowest point, he had the confidence that if, for him, his illness was terminal and he died, that the Creator would have restored him. So, let us all join in singing this song. It is, he will call and you could check the back of your programs. And I'll especially appeal to the singers and the females to start off. That song 151. Of his work
singing is actually a way to praise God. Many of us are lovers of the Psalms. The book of Psalms really are a book of songs. So songs are indeed a part of worship. And as you'll notice with the songs that we do, they are really reflecting messages that are found in the Bible. The one that we just look at helps us to think ahead where the Bible promises the same scripture that's mentioned here. Among the promises mentioned is that death will be no more. So a, a sad situation like, situation like this is to go among the other things that affect us. So these songs, the purpose of them is to really help us to look past the sadness of situations like this. At this point, we, at this point, we want to Anybody who has a strap here comes here, this strap. Come on, please. 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 Come on, please.